Imagine if one day all the traffic lights in the world went out. There was no electricity anywhere. And the devices you rely on just suddenly stopped working. Sounds like a Hollywood movie, right? But on the evening of December 31st, 1999, the struggle was real. Fundamentalist Christians preached of an approaching apocalypse, and some people hunkered down in their basements with a surplus of food, water, and guns, convinced that the modern world would grind to a halt when the clock struck midnight. News outlets around the world had jumped on the story. The so-called Millennium Bug, a computer programming oversight, which meant original mainframes designed in the 1960s could only recognize the last two digits of the year. 1968, for example, was written simply as 68. How would computers interpret the year 2000? Would they reset to 1900 instead, sending banks, government security systems, and global infrastructure into a digital tailspin? Predictably, conspiracy theorists and sensationalist media stoked the wildest theories of what would happen. But in reality, governments had been preparing for the millennial switchover for years. Back in 98, President Bill Clinton had begun Y2K contingency planning, passing new laws and building a $40 million Y2K Problems Operations Center. U.S. businesses spent a collective $100 billion on testing and updating their systems to avoid any potential disasters. And large retailers like Walmart stocked up on necessities in the event of panic buying. So what actually happened when the clocks finally struck midnight? Well, nothing really. Everything just kept on running as it should. The problem had been solved simply by expanding the two-digit date into a four-digit date, making Y2K the biggest, most expensive anti-climax in human history. How would civilization be affected today if all the computers in the world stopped working? 